All right, I want to take a few minutes tonight to talk about um, electrostatics and the electrostatic force calculation. Um, real quick, most of you know that with the electric charge, we have positive and negative charges. Light charges repel and opposites attract. That hopefully is not rocket science. Why that actually occurs, nobody truly knows, but we do know likes. Um, repel and opposites attract. All right, so now when we want to transfer electric charge, we first have to recognize that normally atoms have no net charge. Um, their number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Now, as you probably know, protons and neutrons are in the nucleus and they do not easily move without like a reactor or linear accelerator. Electrons, which are out in the cloud, can be easily transferred from one atom to another atom. And so it's the movement of electrons that determine uh, our charge. When we have two different materials, whenever two different materials rub against each other, we get some electrons transferred. Sometimes it's a lot, like walking across the carpet in your socks in the wintertime. And sometimes it's not a lot like walking across the sock, uh, the carpet in your socks in the summertime. And so it just varies depending upon the materials, time of uh, environmental conditions, all that type of fine thing. The object that is getting the electrons is obviously negatively charged. That leaves the other object with a net positive charge. Main thing, electrons move, um, not protons. Okay, uh, just a real quick couple of definitions about uh, conductors and insulators. An electrical conductor simply allows electrons to move throughout it. Um, copper, iron, any type of most metals are good conductors. An insulator is basically just the opposite. It doesn't allow electrons to move easily. They can, just not very easily. Plastics, rubber, things like that, very good insulators. Now, if a conductor becomes charged, the charge is evenly distributed on it. That's because the light charge, they repel each other, they want to move away from each other, and they can since they're on a conductor. Notice the conductor, when it becomes charged, the charge is evenly distributed on it, not in it, on it. If an insulator becomes charged, which it can if you've ever rubbed the balloon against your hair, the charge does not move. It just stays on that one spot on the insulator. It wants to move, but it can't because it's on an insulator. Now there's a couple of different ways we can charge materials. Both um, insulators and conductors can be charged by contact, rubbing two different materials against each other. If you're charging metal or a, uh, or a conductor, that conductor must be insulated or isolated from ground. If it's not, the charge travels to ground. The other idea is called charging by induction. Now, that is simply the non-contact charging of a conductor by forcing the movement of a negative charge. Let's take a look at a picture to better understand this process. All right, here's a series of pictures. In picture A, we have a negatively charged rod. We bring it near a conductor that is insulated from ground. This negatively charged rod will push away a lot of electrons in the conductor, like charges repel. Leaves a lot of positive charge exposed on the left-hand side of the conductor. If we take a wire and we attach it to the negative side and then attach it to ground, that allows this negative charge to get even further away from this negatively charged rod going to ground. We disconnect the wire and all of a sudden we're left with a net positive charge on our conductor. That's charging by induction. We induced a positive charge on the conductor without touching it. So let's talk about the electric force. It's like any other force. 
it's a push or pull except this is a push or pull between two charged objects if these two charged objects are repelling each other that's a push if they're attracting each other that's a pull we can calculate the amount of this force using Coulomb's law that gives us the magnitude of the force which is in Newtons all forces are in Newtons the direction of the electric force is based on whether the charges are positively or negatively charged if they're opposite charge it's an attractive force if there's um, light charges it's a repelling force electric force is a field force which means it's a non-contact force kind of like the gravitational force very similar to the gravitational force um, actually so here's Coulomb's law equation that looks very similar in setup to the gravitational force q1 and q2 are the amount of charge in coulombs of each of the charged objects a lot of times problems have it in micro coulombs or nano coulombs have to account for that prefix r is the distance between the charges and that's in meters here again a lot of times problems are in millimeters or centimeters k is coulombs constant nine times ten to the ninth in more advanced courses you get you factor in the dielectric constants all this other type of stuff I'm not going to worry about that and then fe is the electric force which is measured in newtons I said that it was very similar to the gravitational force equation. The primary difference is this constant here, K, is 9 times 10 to the 9th. In the gravitational force calculation, it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Kind of drawing a blank a little bit. But that's a difference of this Coulomb's constant is 20 orders of magnitude bigger than the gravi universal gravitation constant. So the electrostatic force is much stronger than gravitational force. Keep in mind, this is a force vector. It's like any other force vector. It's not treated any differently. It has an x component. It can have a y component. It, can, the it has direction associated with it. Don't get hung up on how it's calculated recognize it's just another force um, that we're going to deal with all right that's all i have for you tonight just a few quick notes hope that uh, helped good luck